Welcome back to another video. This is Andy from gymnutrition.co.uk and today's video is going to be about MK677. More specifically, does MK677 need to be cycled? Now before I start, like I say on this little disclaimer bit, um, this video is just for entertainment purposes only. I'm not advocating the use of SARMs or in this case growth hormone secretagogues. And if you do choose to take them, then fair enough, that is down to you. So I'm just gonna give you my opinion, my opinion only, I'm not a doctor by the way, so don't take any notes from me, on whether MK677 needs to be cycled. Now, I'm not gonna leave the yes, no answer till the very end, so you have to watch all this video. So I'm gonna give you the answer now, and there's three. Sorry about that, but hey, -o, this is what I think. So does it need to be cycled? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Maybe it does. Who fucking knows? So the reason I said that, you must think, oh, what a dickhead this idiot is. The reason I said that is, before you start taking MK677, if you want to know, if you want to know for definite, does it does it need to be cycled for you? Because we're all individual. This stuff works like any other supplement works. Completely different for different people. Yeah, we're all individual, as I just said. So you need a baseline, a base, a definite baseline. So the only way you're going to get that is to have a blood test for growth hormone and IGF-1. So if before you start taking MK, if that's what you choose to do then you need to know what your levels are. So a blood test will determine your base levels. Then say after a month, six weeks, this is what I would do if I had a blood test, I haven't had one by the way. After six, four, six weeks, whatever, I'd have another blood test. And hopefully the second blood test will show an increase from the baseline on growth hormone. Okay, so we know definitely that your growth hormone has gone up that much which is a good thing that's what you want it to do now you need to have another blood test in another four or six weeks ish to determine is it still up there is it gone higher lower what's it doing if it's still at the same level as what it was four or six weeks ago then you know the growth hormone is still happening the product's still working mk677 is still there. MK677 is still working, is what I'm trying to say. So, you have another blood test in another six weeks, couple of months or whatever. And if it's starting to come down, then you think to yourself, okay, it's starting to not work now. So maybe I need to cycle it. And me as an individual, if it took six months to slowly come down, you might think to yourself, okay, I know for definite because I've got this in writing on my blood test that MK677 sustains my elevated growth hormone levels for around about six months and then it starts petering back down towards the base level. So, if that was you, you know definitely that you should cycle this MK677 and cycle it, stay on for about six months, stay off for three or four months, five months, however long you choose basically and then you can go back on it again. So that's the only definite, yes, it needs to be cycled route. And every woman, like I said, will be different. So some people, it might elevate it for longer, some people might elevate it for a month or so. Who knows? You can't tell without a blood test. So that's your definite one, yeah? The maybe one is, I'm a maybe, I'm a maybe, because I didn't have a blood test when I saw MK677, so I was bro science in it all the way. So. What I found personally, and this might be wrong, because this is just my pure bro science, yeah? So if anyone's got any comments on what I'm about to say, then please leave them below. So it also increases a hormone called ghrelin, as I've said in my previous MK videos. Ghrelin will increase appetite in most people. Not everyone, most people. Me, ravenous, from day one. First capsule, hours later, I need to eat, and I need to eat big. And that's that happens like every few hours I'm absolutely ravenous at my age I haven't got a big appetite so it was like being I don't know 16 again where you can oh he eats like an horse he eats me out of house and home he does and he pays me £10 a week board so it kind of brought back memories of that so this insane appetite probably sustained itself for I don't know a week maybe maybe just, just over a week I can't remember exactly it was about a year ago since I've done this little experiment on myself but I'll say let's say for argument's sake sustained itself for a week so insane appetite for one week second week 
really good appetite, but it's starting to come down a little bit. Third week, come down a bit more. Fourth week, healthy appetite, a little bit better than what it was at baseline. And then fifth, sixth, seven, eight, it sort of like levels down to my normal sort of appetite. So I'm thinking to myself, if the ghrelin goes like that and then starts coming down after sort of like eight weeks to baseline level, is, this is where I, I don't know the answer, is the growth hormone doing exactly the same? Elevating and then coming down to base level after eight weeks in my case. Now the other thing which made me think this might be true for me, it might be a bit, is that I got the little tingly hands, nothing major, but I'm thinking oh, my, my hands are definitely a little bit, they're not quite the same as they usually are, a little bit tingly. So one of the side effects of increased growth hormone, whether from MK or from uh, you know injecting growth hormone, is you get tingly hands. Again, not everyone, some people, I got it. So the tingly hands, again, came down like that with me over six weeks maybe, maybe eight weeks. But it, it, was, it was high and came down, pretty much alongside the ghrelin coming down. So I'm thinking, ghrelin came down to baseline after eight weeks, say, so did the tingly hands. So I'm thinking, maybe I need to come off after eight weeks and cycle this stuff because this stuff's not going to be working for, for me personally after eight weeks. So, that, so that's the maybe. Um, and also the don't know bit as well. So that covers the don't know because if you're just bro science up, you think, well, I don't really know because I haven't got the blood test. So the only way to say, doesn't need cycling, blood test. Or if you want the, the maybe not sure route like I've done, then just pay attention to what's happening with your appetite and pay attention to what's happening to the, if, you get, if you get the tingly hands. So I hope that's been of some sort of help for you, but I would say take the blood test. If you're in America, I know you, could, you guys can do, um, you go on the internet and you, you can just do a blood test through the post. Uh, I'm not sure if we can do that in the UK. So if anyone watching this in the UK has had a blood test spe specifically, I'm trying to say, for growth hormone and IGF, then again, let me know, please. Um, and that's all I wanted to say on the subject. So that's a short, sweet video for me because it's under 10 minutes, yeah, seven. I'm squinting to see without my glasses. So hopefully I've uh, empowered some of um, my bro science on you and uh, made you smile a little bit as well. So on that note, I'm going to cook steak I'm going to have steak tonight with new potatoes and vegetables. So on that note, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, maybe a thumbs down. Please subscribe as well. Please. Not that I'm begging for subscribers, but you know. Please, I've only got a few. So anyway, I'm going, I'm waffling. I'm not even had a pre-workout. See you next time. Bye.